Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we are continuing our discussion of gene expression. Specifically, this is part two of our DNA transcription lesson. And here is an overview of gene expression. Once again, the overall idea of gene expression is using DNA to create functional protein. And there must be these intermediate steps um, before that happens. We already talked about chromatin remodeling and the start of DNA transcription called initiation. And today we'll finish transcription by going over elongation and termination. Okay, so let's get started. Oh, and by the way, if you're not familiar with some of the vocabulary or terms that, that I'm going to be using, please check out part one of my transcription lesson because there is when I introduce a lot of these uh, terms and vocabulary. Okay, so after initiation, we have transcription elongation. And this is basically the process of continuously growing out the RNA transcript. So after initiation, the transcription factors that were bound to the promoter are left behind and will dissociate from the DNA. And so we just have the RNA polymerase 2 that will continue to traverse the DNA, creating the transcription bubble as it moves along. In the transcription bubble, RNA nucleotides are, um, are recruited and base paired using the DNA template strand as a template in order to um, grow the RNA transcript from a 5' prime to three prime direction. Again, because um, this has to be complementary to the template strand. And in order for all of this to go smoothly, proteins, okay, proteins called elongation factors are recruited are recruited as the RNA polymerase moves along the D, uh, moves along the DNA. Um, the, the elongation factors in this uh, image is not shown, but you just have to uh, imagine that there's a bunch of other proteins that come together that are uh, recruited to, this, uh, to the RNA polymerase as, uh, as it moves along the DNA in order to ensure everything you know, goes smoothly. An interesting modification that happens early on as the RNA transcript grows is a covalent modification at the 5' prime end of the RNA. And this is called adding a 5' prime cap. Um, we'll look at this more in depth in the next lesson. Um, so for now, you don't have to worry about what a 5' prime cap is, but do uh, realize that this is a very important modification that occurs at the 5' prime end of the RNA um, during transcription. Elongation, though, is not a continuous process. What I mean is that the RNA polymerase is, uh, the R RNA polymerase pause, it pauses and even uh, backtracks during its journey. Now, why does it do that? Well, one of the major reasons why is because the RNA polymerase has 
proofreading activity. Let me write that down. Uh, proof reading. And uh, proofreading is when mistakes are corrected. It's just like when you misspell a word and you need to hit the delete key in to fix your typo. And so sometimes the polymerase pauses or even backtracks to fix uh, base pairing mistakes. So the major reason um, for these pauses and backtracking is just to kind of fix these errors that, that, that it makes. The last step of transcription is called termination. This here just shows elongation, which we, which we just talked about. And so eventually it will transition to a step called termination. Termination occurs once the RNA polymerase reaches the end of a gene. At the three prime end of the RNA transcript, there is a specific sequence called the polyadenylation signal. Two protein complexes, one called CPSF, which stands for um, which stands for cleavage. and polyadenylation uh, A-D-E-N-Y-L-A okay yeah adenylation specificity factor yeah it's a pretty long name okay so one one protein complex called the CPSF and the other one called the C S T F which stands for cleavage cleavage uh stimulation factor. Okay. These two bind the polyadenylation signal and they recruit other proteins to help cleave or cut basically the RNA transcript and it polyadenyl and polyadenylates the three prime end. Um, what does polyadenylate mean? Why is it called the polyadenylation signal? Well, it means a string of adenines or a string of A's. Right, adenine is just a nucleotide. Will be added right after the cleavage site, um, which again, which is initiated by the binding of these two protein complexes, and then it recruits other proteins to generate this cleavage or cut event. After that, we have completed transcription, a completed RNA transcript, which just at a glance. We see at the five prime end we have a five prime cap, which I will get to later on. This was mentioned on the previous slide, and then um, we at the three prime end we have a three prime. Uh, it's called a poly A tail, or poly adenylate uh, poly um, tail, I guess you can say, or poly adenine tail. Um, one thing of note though, the RNA uh, polymerase, the RNA polymerase doesn't immediately dissociate with the DNA, but it does, um, it does eventually as it keeps, as it keeps uh, moving along the, uh, the DNA, uh, the DNA template. There are different models for the exact mechanism, but for now we don't really have to worry about that. All right, let's briefly go over what we talked about today. We finished transcription. And remember, the point of transcription is to use DNA as a template to make RNA. And then this RNA will serve as a template for protein production or gene expression. The first step of transcription is called initiation, in which we talked about in our previous lesson. The next step is called elongation in which the transcription factors are left behind at the promoter region 
and eventually they'll dissociate from the DNA. During this time, of course, this means the RNA polymerase proceeds along the DNA template in order to, in order to synthesize and grow the RNA transcript from the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. In order to make sure this all goes smooth, smoothly, um, there are many proteins that are recruited called elongation factors. At the 5' prime end of the RNA transcript, a covalent modification occurs called the 5' prime cap, in which we will look at next time. During elongation, there's, uh, the RNA polymerase also pauses and backtracks in order to proofread the RNA transcript, which means um, in order to fix any base pairing mistakes. The last, step of the last step of transcription is called termination. And at the end of the RNA transcript, there is a special sequence called the polyadenylation signal. Two major protein complexes called CPSF and CSTF recognize the signal or recognize the sequence and they bind to, to, to the polyadenylation um, sequence. After binding, they recruit uh, other proteins to the region and then they cleave or, or cut, cleave or cut the RNA at the 3' prime end. After that, we have a process called polyadenylation. And since this occurs at the 3' prime end, it's called 3' prime polyad polyadenylation, in which a, a, string, a, a string of adenines are added to the RNA transcript. After that, we have finished trans transcription, in which we have an RNA transcript, and at the 5' prime end, we have a cap, and at the 3' prime end, we have something called a poly A tail. And um, eventually, the RNA polymerase, uh, the RNA polymerase 2, dissociates with the DNA. Um, but again, that doesn't, this doesn't immediately happen, and this happens actually, um, the, the RNA polymerase actually keeps going for a while, and there are several models describing the mechanism, um, but again, this is not something we need to go into depth um, currently, right now. Well, that concludes today's lesson. Next time, we're going to take a closer look at the completed RNA transcript. And uh, yeah, thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.